Okay, you fans of uh, cinema and popular culture, uh, especially the cinema of the 20th century, I'm gonna take you to the only house ever owned by the great Bill Bojangles Robinson here in South Central LA, about two blocks west of USC. And now I guess it's apparently a uh, student housing Anyway, uh, the great Bill Bojangles Robinson, he was one of the most famous, if not the most famous, black man of the first half of the 20th century and the highest paid. It's on the corner here of 36th place. Here we go, we're coming up to it in Catalina Street. He, he built this house. It was designed in 1942 by the great Paul Williams architect who incidentally designed the theme building, the famous LAX futuristic uh, building that is glaringly right in your face when you get off at LAX. He, he designed the house that Frank Sinatra once lived in and Des, Lucy and Desi Arnaz, Julie London. Okay, let's uh, take a look at this house. And like I said, he, he lived here for only six months with his wife Fanny, who, whom he was uh, married to for 25 years. And sadly, when he uh, moved in here with Fanny, they got divorced soon after, after six months. And uh, this is all, the vestige of it is not very well kept, obviously. But you can see uh, pictures of the way it looked in its heyday in 1943. And uh, the great Bill Bojangles Robinson, he made $3 million in his lifetime. And he died penniless in 1949. And he, was, he had absolutely no money, so his great friend, the great impresario Ed Sullivan, paid for his funeral. And uh, if you're aware of his four films, Just Around the Corner, 1938, with Shirley Temple, Rebecca of Sunnybrook Farm, 1938 also, The Littlest Rebel, 1935, and The Little Colonel. And that's the film where he did the famous step uh, stair dance with a great Shirley Temple. And I thought it was ironic today because what would be in here today, it was serendipitous because he made a lot of his fame by being in Shirley Temple's films. And I thought it was ironic that they just uh, said that they were going to uh, release the first uh, Shirley Temple posted stamps. So over here in the backyard, uh, the great Paul Williams, great architect, he built a, an adult uh, uh, playhouse, what they call an adult playhouse in the back, with a view of the garden and pool. And uh, the ceiling was bedecked with bamboo, and it was jungle themed throughout with uh, brown leather furniture and a pool and a bar and the whole trappings for a famous well-to-do man at least when he was alive he was well-to-do but he was spending it like water obviously anyway he said that he didn't have any time due to the time schedule of the the little rebel that he was doing with uh shirley temple so he said what he did was he modified his steps to make it look like shirley was mimicking him and uh, he was actually imitating her steps. So, but what doesn't matter because that was a fantastic dance. I mean, just watching it was so complicated in the film. And uh, the great Bill Bojangles Robinson, he was, he was born in Richmond, Virginia. And uh, his, his parents died and left him and uh, his brother uh, Bill destitute. And uh, I say Bill because they said that they actually named uh, Bill Bill Bojangles. They named him Luther, and he hated his name. He said so. He, I don't know if it's apocryphal or what, but he said that him and Bill exchanged names, and then later on, Bill went by per uh, Percy, yeah, and Bill went by obviously Bill. And uh, he learned his craft on the streets of Richmond, Virginia, 
And by the right before World War II, he was already making $3,500 a week. And he has a couple of firsts in his life. He was actually the, considered the first black to ever go solo on Broadway without an act. Before they had a law that a black man had to be with another black man, like a tandem type of setup. And then he, he uh, was the first uh, black to ever be in an interracial scene in a film. And uh, I was going to say in 1898, he joined the Spanish-American War. But I don't know if he was in action. All they said was he got shot accidentally by a second lieutenant while the second lieutenant was cleaning his rifle. And uh, I don't know if that's... I don't know if he did it on purpose or what, but... Uh, Anyway, at thir age 39 in 1917, he, uh, he joined what they called the 369th Regiment, New York Regiment. And that was from New York. And uh, they were called the Harlem Hellfighters because that was the name they got from the Germans. Because they said whenever they knew that the, that the 369th was opposite to them, they said that they would never... They would never lose a man to capture, they would never lose a foot of a ground, and they would never lose a trench. And they took fierce, horrible, horrific casualties whenever they were attacked by the Germans and vice versa. They gave as good as they got. And the Germans, they said, would always say, Ach, scheiß, the whole Kampfers sind gegenüber uns, mein Gott. So, okay, and another thing too, the marching band of the 369th, they introduced jazz to Northern Europe. That was the first time they ever heard jazz. And uh, too bad, look at the way this place looks. They had to have a plaque. They had to, they had to put a statue of the great Bill Bojangles Robinson. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you another factoid. He's the guy, I don't know, I know the pe people today, they never heard the famous word copacetic but that was the word you one would use in the 20s and 30s to say cool or bitchin or far out or whatever well he's the one that coined it and they said that every time he was on uh, the radio and in vaudeville he was always saying that's copacetic man so by the time the 1960s rolled around that's probably about the last time you ever heard that word but I want to just say that there was a an animated film that I saw in 1981 called American Pop by uh, in, an animator named Ralph Bakshi and there, there was a character that used that word and I thought that was a cool word and uh, at the time I was working at Sears with this older black woman and I told her oh yeah that's copacetic man and she goes where'd you hear that Clyde I said oh, I, I heard it in a film called American Pop she goes I haven't heard that since the 1960s so she was pretty amazed that I knew that word but anyway that was considered hep cat talk jive talk and this is the man who coined that word and it was entered into the uh, Webster's Dictionary in 1934. Okay, well, here you go, 36th place. And I sure would like to go into that house and see how it looks now, but it's obviously patently student housing. And he did four films with the great Shirley Temple, but of course he did other films and uh, very well paid and like I said sadly he died penniless and he uh, actually he uh, started the career of Ann Miller they said and uh, Fred Astaire so that's why I thought it would be a propose to uh, to uh, start this little vignette with Fred Astaire's uh, that song right there that I started off the video with Okay, well, and I want to say that his name, I don't know if that's apocryphal, but they said that his name is from the Pali language, the Buddhist Indian language, Pali, and it's uh, actually Bojanga, and it means limbs of enlightenment. So apparently he got it somewhere in the streets of Richmond as a little boy, and his grandmother uh, raised his two bro him and his brother. And uh, okay, it's this, if you want to come, like I said, it's about two blocks west of USC at 1194 West 36th place. Okay, and then he was married uh, three times. 
to Alina Chase, 1907 and 1922. And then he was married to uh, Fanny from 1922 to 1943. And then his last wife was uh, Elaine Plainus from 1944 to 1949. And they said that he, Fanny lived here until 1969. And uh, when they opened up her safe deposit box, there was a couple of thousand dollars and some old bonds and stocks, but that was about it over his whole lifetime. And uh, apparently the guy that was investing his money, he didn't do a very good job, obviously, right? Okay, well, that's a little bit of the history of this great man who lived, once lived here. We'll never forget you, Bill. You were a fantastic performer, dancer, entertainer, and thank you for all the happiness you gave to the world. Good night, sweet prince.